Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you all on this day? Nice out. Comparatively, been it had been a scorcher, but things are looking better. People have come back from vacations and all kinds of good stuff. As usual, our worship is going to begin on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer or page 1 in your Red Service booklet. If you're online, you should be able to pull one of those down from our website. And if you're in the pews, you all know what to do. Our opening worship hymn is hymn 410. Let's worship God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that as you, as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Hosea. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of whoredom, and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish, punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Loruhamah, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them, but I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow or by sword or by war or by horses or by horsemen. When she had weaned Loruhamah, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Loami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of the people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. And in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, Children of the living God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 85, found in your service leaflet. Let us read responsively by the half verse. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored, you have restored the, the good, good fortune, fortune of Jacob. Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and, and blotted out all their sins. sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned, turned yourself from, from your wrath and indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again? That your, your people, people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. He is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. That his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our land will yield his increase. Righteousness shall go before him. And peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. 
In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him, when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. There are, they, these are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Good morning. This morning for our sequence hymn, we will sing hymn number 674. Hymn 674. Forgive our sins as we forgive. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend. And you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are in bed with me. I cannot get up and get you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and get him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. For everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there any among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give him a, a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to, Praise you, Lord to you, Lord Christ. Christ. the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, your strength and our redeemer. Amen. This morning we heard Luke's record of Jesus teaching the Lord's Prayer. Our lectionary has been taking us straight through Luke, so today's reading comes on the heels of last week's reading. Pop quiz, what was last week's gospel reading? Very good, very good. Martha and Mary. It's easy to dismiss last week's reading and this week's reading as being disconnected. Let's not make that mistake. The story of Martha and Mary may explain why Jesus may have taught the Lord's Prayer here. In the story of Martha and Mary, we see a problem. The Lord's Prayer offers a solution, and the stories after the Lord's Prayer explain how to obtain the solution. It's arguable that the point Jesus made has greater importance for us now than for the original hearers. Let me explain. From a cultural standpoint, Mary has stood as the ideal for more than a millennium. She's a contemplative and devoted to worshiping Jesus. This expressed the highest goal. As such, the monastic life was seen as the best and most worthy life. Not so anymore. Contemplation meditation, and worship fall into the expendable time category. It doesn't even rank very high there. For parents on Sundays, there's real pressure to take your child to a soccer rather than to church, right? Someone who would never think of shrinking from their duties at work or being late to their job will let their Bible get dusty on the counter, and sleep in on Sunday. That's verifiable data. Don't worry, I'm not going to name names. Western culture applauds. Applauds Martha for her many type A attributes. She's bold, outspoken, has the audacity to challenge Jesus on multiple occasions, not just last week's story. In John chapter 11, when Jesus was at Lazarus' tomb, Jesus said, roll the stone away. Martha, the realist, said, responded, wait a minute, are you crazy? <laughs> the stench is going to be terrible. Martha is very goal-oriented and incredibly busy. She's her own person, and she gets things done. She's the modern ideal of success. Many of us have strong Martha tendencies, and I like those tendencies, both in myself and other people. Even if those tendencies tend to cause friction. Movement involves friction, right? So get over it. There are trade-offs here, and Martha's know about it. For example, we tend not to have much of a life outside of work. We're more of a human doing than a human being. One of the magazines I sometimes read is Fast Company. It's for a hard-driving, ambitious, and 
business entrepreneurs, it celebrates Marthaness. By the way, this is one of those magazines that if you read it online, it gives the amount of time it'll take to read at the very top. Helps out to see if you really want to put that investment in the article. I love it. I love it. It had a good article, like how to design a life that works. A life, for example, that includes sleep. It's a real article. It asks good questions, like how much is enough? Since the Episcopal Church tends to attract A-type personalities, I think many here understand about this. Fast Company acts as a good observer and cites people who have wildly successful careers, but then note that their personal life tends to implode. Yet they can't stop working. They can't stop charging around. They can't stop giving orders. They just can't not stop. Even if it is quite literally killing them. I get that. I really do. Jesus diagnosed Martha last week. Jesus said, you are worried and upset about many things. The words here could be translated, tormenting cares that cause emotional commotion. The tasks that she did had value, but she had the angst that comes with spreading yourself too thin. Martha alienates herself from her sister by trying to embarrass Mary and Jesus publicly. Martha had a goal. And what other people were doing really just didn't matter. These busy people often don't have time for relationships and ignore feelings. They burst into other people's conversations and events without even an excuse me because they're not trying to make friends. They're just trying to get their stuff done. And that's the important thing, right? Get stuff done. Martha say, I can't stop working because I have to keep everything going. I know how life should go, and I can make it happen if I push harder. I do that. Marthas have an un overinflated view of their ability to control their own lives and the lives of those around them. They say, I don't have an identity unless I'm successfully achieving my goals. They overestimate their ability to control life, and they underestimate their worth as persons. As we said last week, there's no problem with being task-oriented that's just the way some people are wired. As we also know, a strength overused becomes a weakness. Therefore, Marthas can find themselves in a lot of trouble. Last week, we ended with Jesus saying, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is only need of one thing. Martha might have thought, okay, what is it? Jesus went on to say, Mary's got it. Martha might have thought, okay, what is it? <laughs> End of chapter, and Martha's still in trouble. Luke's account today brings us the cure, the one thing that's undefined last week. Now, it's easy to say the one thing is to focus in on God. But that can be so vague that it becomes meaningless in practice. Martha's can't stop trying to get too much done. They can't stop expanding their grasp. They need to do something that may be impossible for them. They need to stop, pray, and submit to God's vision. Rather than planning acquisitions and executing purchases based on their 30-year plan, they need to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Now, 
to a Martha. That sounds like a plan on how to be poor and hungry. My mom used to say, all work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy. To which I replied, all play and no work makes Johnny poor and stupid. <laughs> mom didn't like that response. <laughs> Prayer requires humility. As the very act confesses that we cannot accomplish the task. And thy will be done means that we're submitting to someone else's will. That's tough for Martha's. So here's a carrot for Martha's. God's asking you to do less so that you can accomplish more. Let me illustrate in reference to local churches. George Barna wrote, one of Satan's greatest weapons today is to breed confusion and dissension within churches by creating more needs in people and society than a given body of believers can possibly address. The natural tendency of a church is to try and be all things to all people, providing the insights and resources needed for people to handle any condition. In reality, the reality, however, is that a church cannot be effective in ministry if it spreads itself so thin that it does a mediocre job in a wide array of ministry opportunities. We've talked about clutter at St. Paul's, and Barna is going the same direction here. Clutter in both stuff and doing stuff. We can clutter ourselves into ineffectiveness with the best of intentions. How about we do three things well rather than 50 things poorly? I can use an example of a ministry we support, Arms of Hope, Falls Home down in Quinlan. Arms of Hope knows why they exist. They offer a Christian environment to handle disadvantaged children and single mother families who want to become productive members of society. De facto, they know what they do not do. They do not offer meals to the homeless. They do not offer support for cancer victims. And they don't dig water wells in Africa. Those are all noble tasks but it's not their task. They say no to other noble tasks because they have a God-given task to which they say yes. To come at things differently, sometimes people present the primary focus of Christianity is avoiding sin. Say no to bad things. Certainly, the Christian life in involves avoiding immoral behavior, but that's secondary stuff. Primary is living a life with God. To be, a, to be faithful to what the Lord calls us to do, we will need to say no to some good and virtuous things. And that can be tough. But it's the only way to be faithful to our calling. We see this in successful businesses all the time. For example, who here has ever gone to a restaurant called McDonald's? You ever been there? Who here has ever gone to McDonald's and said, I'll have a Big Mac and a rake? <laughs> Anything wrong with rakes? We don't go to McDonald's to get a rake any more than we go to Home Depot to get a Big Mac. Then why would a small church like ours think that God is calling us to provide for every need in our community? It has strong application for us as individuals and as a parish. As a general motto, we say at St. Paul's, put Jesus first. And at St. Paul's, we have a practical application in three areas. 
I habitually put these in the rector's annual report and look for them again in January. Many here know what they are, and if you don't know what they are, here they are again. One, traditional liturgical worship of Jesus Christ. We're the only Episcopal or Anglican church in Hunt County. We live in Baptistville. Maybe you've noticed. That means a certain kind of worship is commonplace in our community. And good for them. A lot of churches do a really good job of that. Our worship is unique. Our hymnody is different. And we need to promote and increase the excellence of our Anglican style of worship of Jesus. That was one. Two, self-care. We have an aging church plant and an aging congregation. Maybe you've noticed. The sands of time have impacted us, and we tend to need more repairs and maintenance than we have in the past. And someone grabs their knee. And we have a responsibility to attend to the needs of St. Paul's aging buildings and bodies. Three, outreach. We don't exist simply to take care of ourselves. St. Paul's Episcopal School is the only full-time Christian school for infants to pre-K in Greenville, maybe in Hunt County. Investing in offering the gospel to the next generation doesn't get much easier than ministering to the 85 children who come to our school Monday through Friday. We don't, have, we don't even have to leave church property to go into the mission field. And we've been doing it for 50 years, over 50 years. Oh, we'll, we'll do some small stuff. You know, we'll help out Arms of Hope, Gateway of Grace, for the city, sure. But these are not the meat of our outreach ministry. One, traditional Anglican worship of Jesus. Two, self-care of building and bodies. Three, outreach primarily through our school. A church of our size cannot do much more than those three areas without becoming ineffective and frustrated, just like Martha was. And let's face it, we have a hard time filling our schedule on Sundays, don't we? We need to be faithful on what's already on our plate before we start adding other things. We need discipline to stay focused. The kind of prayer that Jesus teaches in the Lord's Prayer combines the beauty of both Martha and Mary. Jesus calls us as individuals and a parish to pray submissively and aggressively. Submissively, like Mary. Aggressively, like Martha. Not one or the other, but both. It begins with the submission of Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and praying, Thy will be done, not my will. That can sound like vague piety that floats off into the clouds until Martha shows up and asks for specific goals, thank you. And that comes out with, Give us this day our daily bread. The illustrations that Jesus immediately follows that with after giving that prayer bring the point home. He says, go boldly. Ask. Knock. Seek. He say, ask for specific things. Daily bread means specifics. My daily stuff. Circumstances. Use Martha to aim at specific goals to accomplish in order to give flesh to Mary's thy will be done submission. Jesus gives the illustration of knocking on a friend's door late at night 
to bring out the boldness. And knocking of the, on the door brings specificity. You knock at a friend's door, not wandering through the neighborhood like a lost salesman. Yet like a salesman, you do have a specific request. Bread. Knocking also reveals relentlessness. You don't just knock once. If you knock once, the person may wake up, the dog may wake up, and say, what was that? And then go back to sleep. They're not going to answer the door. Jesus uses knocking as an image for praying and saying, ask specifically and relentlessly for what is necessary to do the will of God. Be a Mary, eyes on Jesus. Be Martha, be relentless. This is more expansive of prayer than we sometimes see. Jesus commanded us to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Playing for high stakes there. We're praying and building for the kingdom of God. Deepening our relationship with God. Sharing the gospel with those who haven't heard and have lost their way. Striving for justice and mercy in our families, in our community, in our country. It's fine to pray for Aunt Lucy's broken toe, but if our prayer life only contains things like Aunt Lucy's broken toe, we've got a problem. We're aiming way too low. Look at what's going on in our world. Foundations are shifting. People do not know the gospel or Jesus. We're praying and building for big stuff, the kingdom of God, doing our part faithfully each day. Mary teaches us to pray submissively, and Jesus praised her in last week's reading. He was not trying to turn Martha into Mary, round peg into a square hole. He's teaching her to use her God-given boldness and can-do attitude for the kingdom of God. We rightly desire to have a life that has both serenity and assertiveness. Not being assertive and then getting frustrated when things don't go the way we want. Not being submissive and blithely passive. We need both. How can we get a life like that? Pray like Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Now that's a cure, but alone it can lead to frustration. Some will say, okay, I need to pray more aggressively. Some will say, okay, I need to pray more submissively. That's going down the path of turning prayer into a technique called religion. Religion says, if I do things correctly and by the rules, therefore God will bless me with the goodies that I want. The normal way of understanding religion is trying to earn your salvation. That's religion, not a gospel-based relationship with Jesus. The key to the cure comes from the conversations. Not conversation as a single discrete act, but conversations as an ongoing transformation and thinking and behaving. It begins with the first two words of the Lord's Prayer. You know what they are. Our Father. Our Father. How do children approach their father? Boldly and submissive. Boldly, yanking on the sleeve, having unfettered access to the father. Over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of Zoom videos where you have a big, important executive working from home, has that curated backdrop, and then a little boy comes in and photobombs that 
big, important meeting. That's the boldness of a child who knows that his daddy loves him. Submissively. If daddy says no, go ask grandma, right? <laughs> no. Daddies withhold no good thing from their children. Does that mean daddy always says yes? Because the child rests in the assurance of their father's love, they submit to the father's will. Sometimes more easily than others. Parents continually respond to children's needs, but ignore their requests. We see this with small children all the time. Parents responding to the need, but ignoring the request. That's where Jesus seems to be going in his illustrations. Take one of those illustrations in reverse. Father walks with his child, and the child hears a rattling sound under a bush. And there sees a cute little rattlesnake. And the child says, I want that for a pet. What does the father do? Signs him up for special forces, of course. Now, the, the father grabs the child and says, no. I can say that loud because the dog's not in here. When I say that, the dog thinks I'm cursing at her. <laughs> All prayers are answered. Sometimes the answer is no. And then the funny says, the father says, honey, I'll get you a dog. I'll get you a cat. I'll even get you a goat. What the father is saying is the same thing that God says to us. Honey, I'm going to give you what you would have asked for if you knew everything that I know. Christians are people that know that that's the way it is with prayer. When I pray to God, I get what I ask for or will get something I should have asked for if I knew everything that he knows. The Father will respond to my need even if he turns down my specific request. He loves me. Loves you. Religion says I give God a record of my proper behavior and then God owes me a blessing. The Gospel says God through the cross of Jesus Christ has adopted me into the family of God, and now I live for him. I owe him everything. He owes me nothing. Christians do not have to do pious aerobics to receive God's blessing. In Jesus Christ, I am completely loved. If I have received what Jesus has done on the cross, this means I am simultaneously justified and a sinner. Simul justus et peccator, as Martin Luther said. As a beloved child of God, washed in the blood of Jesus, we have unfettered access to God. In praying the Lord's Prayer, we take the boldness and relentlessness of Martha and combine it with the submissiveness and focus of Mary. Knowing we are loved, forgiven, and directed, we work together to build for the kingdom of God right here at St. Paul's in Hunt County, Texas. Submissively doing the work that the Father has called us to do. Amen. Let us stand and say we believe, using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 3, can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 328 or in your red service leaflet. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. O God, Heavenly Father, who by thy Son, Jesus Christ, hast promised to all those who seek thy kingdom and its righteousness all things necessary to sustain their life. Send us, we entreat thee, in this time of need, such moderate rain and showers that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to thy honor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Pray for the persecuted church and for those in harm's way for our safety. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask. In the name of your Son, accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Humbly kneeling, let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. You have not loved us. You have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Glory to your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Well, good morning. Good morning. Glad y'all are here. And as usual, we have refreshments over in the parish hall after the service. Come join us over there. Give us a chance to chat. We've got the vestry highlights in the back of the bulletin. I'm obviously not going to read those through. Um, one thing to add this week, especially. We'll see what we are. I see what I say next Sunday. And our air conditioner's out in the office itself. So I'm not going to be in there too much. And I'm not going to ask Angela to sit there in 90 plus degree <laughs> room. So we'll, office hours are going to be kind of sketchy next week. Hopefully, things will get fixed and we'll be up and running pretty soon. And I think that's it. Oh, you got one. Mike, you need a mic. St. Paul's Episcopal School is having a school supply drive. <clears throat> In the parish hall, you will find a uh, board with uh, yellow tabbies describing what kind of materials they would like to have. Construction paper, pencils, crayons, etc. watercolors. So. We are also collect, we're collecting those at that point. There are, uh, there's a table that accepts the school supplies that you're able to provide to the St. Paul's Episcopal School. So if there's not a yellow tab on the, on the board, then just put your brain to work as to what kind of school supplies you'd like to have if you went to St. Paul's Episcopal School, because it'll work, they'll take it. You know. So the, uh, the school supply drive for the school is ongoing and we're accepting it for the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 613 in the red hymnal. Hymn 613, Thy kingdom come, O God.
all things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Dear goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Dear goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life, and you made us in your image, calling us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, join our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over through suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done. On, on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread. And, forgive and forgive us our, our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. 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 Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. The peace of God which passes all understanding of your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 709 in the Red Hymn Book. Hymn 709, O God of Bethlehem. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
by your rules? Okay.